Welcome out to the Epically Geeky Show, episode number 129. I'm your host for the evening, Eugene Stevens. Tonight's opening question is, as far as the media went, not everything else, but just as far as media goes, how was 2019 for you? Uh, we'll start with uh, Jennifer. How are you doing there? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's going. It's been a while. It's going. Um, yeah, I think 2019 was pretty good for media. Um, we got... In game, we got Star Wars. Uh, we we got some closure in those two stories, and those were some big ones, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't, honestly, and, and this will be most of the show. Uh, you know, I don't really pay attention to much other media these days, <laughs> other than movies. So that's you know kind of my perspective on that. But I know there were there were other great movies um, that came out as well throughout the year. So I was I was pretty happy. Good deal. Uh, Chris, how was, how was 2019 for you media wise? Media wise. Yes. It was was all right. It was all right. Uh, so for me, um, I'm trying to remember when things actually came out because I've binged watch a lot of stuff lately. Uh, but Witcher, that was a good one. Yes. I enjoyed that. Little, little frustrated people are, were trying to compare it to Game of Thrones and then got all mad (laughs) when it wasn't like Game of Thrones. Yes. Uh, then there's Endgame, which I needed. I needed Endgame super bad because <laughs> yeah, we needed that. Closure. Yeah, and I read a lot of books, which was nice. Lots oh, of, nice. Yeah, they didn't all come out. Obviously, a lot of them didn't come out in 2019, but yeah. it was a good year. Good year for reading. And then The Mandalorian, which I finally watched all in one day, and discovered the term <sighs> cuteness aggression, which is what I have towards Baby Yoda. What what is cuteness aggression? I just want to squeeze up like you just get so like cute I could just like, scream uh, like I just want to bite its face like that kind of he stuff. He is so like, adorable. Oh, I couldn't believe I want to, I watched that and I'm like I want another baby like I was too much. Ray's like no oh I'm like God. that's so cute though. What is that Pixar movie where the little girl is like, it's just so cute I could scream. It's um oh, uh, up not up uh, die. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, so fluffy I could die. Uh, no, you're you're thinking of um, Gru and the little kid yeah. in the, the uh, minis. Yeah. Anyways. Despicable me. Yeah. Despicable me. Yeah, but that yeah. is an actual term, cuteness aggression, and mm-hmm. I have it very bad for Baby Yoda. Yes, it's it, as soon as I saw it, I was just like, what the hell is this? And I was just like, oh my god, this is adorable. And it just like, every time. Every time Baby Yoda was on screen, I made like this cooing noise cooing. like i couldn't help it i was like oh look at him like every time it was stupid it was ridiculous what did ray do just like laughed at give me you the, the whole look. time nice laughed at me the whole time he thought it was endearing so that was to my better i was probably being super yeah wrong. it was a good year for reading and books i have to say like you i didn't read a lot of new stuff but i did read some good stuff yeah yes uh, yeah, I have to e- echo everything you said. Uh, movie-wise, we, you know, we essentially wrapped up the Star Wars for right now before we kind of figure out where we're going with that. Uh, but then we also got the Mandalorian, and that's just, you know, ever since they announced it, I was like, yes, this is this is what I want. And then when I got it, it was not what I expected, and it was so much more. Yeah. Um, the Witcher was fantastic, uh, especially after you read a little bit and understand that the story is not chronologic you know in the right yeah. you know in the right order once you understand that and go yeah. oh okay that makes a lot more sense because you're sitting there going what i thought that already happened what the hell are they talking yeah. about um uh that uh as for reading yes there were the fact that we got to interview uh a couple of authors was just oh very cool so awesome oh, uh, yeah. I, I know I, granted the last one we did was technically in, in 2020 but still um yeah, it's just, you know, I think 2019 was actually a really good year. Um, looking at forward to 2020, there are definitely a few highlights that are kind of sticking out. Uh, but honestly, it's definitely not on the same level for me just because, you know, it was the the 22nd movie in the, you know, Marvel cinema you know we've been building up for this almost since day one with, you know, the Marvel movies. And then of course, Star Wars has kind of been leading up to this point since 1977. So, you know, it was a, there was some big wrap up here. So, uh, but looking forward to 2020, uh, there's definitely some stuff that I'm looking forward to. So, and that's actually what we're talking about tonight. I know, 
we didn't really have an episode in January. It's just it's been tough. We've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, before we actually get started, uh, I had mentioned a couple of things on the previous episode. And if you don't listen to the, any of the other shows, I'm again, Ed, fill, the, uh, fill you in on that stuff. Uh, we are at, we are cutting the show back to uh, once a month, just mainly to make way for our new show, which we are recording later this week, uh, the first episode of Creatively Geeky. Uh, so we're bringing on another episode and we've sat down and kind of looked at some scheduling and it's not always going to hold up, but we are going to try to have a new episode of our shows at least once a week. I'm shooting for Mondays, but it may not always be the case. Uh, so like this one probably actually won't, won't hit until Tuesday, but in any case, we are going to try to have a new episode once a week, uh, of one of the shows. Uh, you know, if it works out that way, great. If not, you know, it is what it is, but, uh, yes, we are cutting back this show to once a month just to make room for the other show. So, uh, with that being said, uh, even though it is February, so we're already a month into, uh, 2020, which God, that just seems weird to say yeah. it's 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to talk about some of our most anticipated media for 2020. So we looked ahead, we came up with a list of 10 things that we're looking forward to, uh, most uh, coming out this uh, year. So, would anyone like to start? I'll I'll go. All right, Chris. What is the and this doesn't this isn't ranked. This doesn't have to oh, be my yeah. number ten or my number one. Just what is something that you're you're really anticipating for in 2020? Um, so I really had to because we don't have uh cable, we don't get commercials, so I don't see movie trailers coming out, and I don't pay. So I actually had to look this up to see what was actually coming out. Um. I'm excited to see Black Widow, mostly because of David Harbour. <laughs> I, really, I have to really s- like him. <laughs> uh, doubts on everybody's list. Yeah. Black Widow. Yes, Black Widow is definitely on my list as well. Yeah. Um, uh, she is extremely pleasant to look at. I do love her character as Black Widow. I I would like to see the backstory on this. Yeah. But yes, when he showed up, I was like. All right. This amazing. is interesting. I I, I want to see how this is going to go. So, yeah. well, he made a really I I watched um uh Hellboy, the reboot one, and he was great in it. He was really really good. It just was really crappy the timing of the release of Hellboy with everything going on with Marvel. Um but yeah, Black Widow and him in it. I, yeah, he's a really good superhero and just the dad bought on him is I'm enjoying it. I have a huge crush on him. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> uh, Jen, what's uh, what's something on your uh, most anticipated list? Well, I'm going to pick another badass female superhero movie, Wonder Woman 1984. Yep, I think that's slated well. for June. Um, I mean, she's just great in that role. And yeah, I'm excited to see where they go with it and how they kind of bring back this character who isn't in the later movies. So what happened to him? You know, lots of questions, but yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. The trailer for it looks fantastic. I love the vibe that it has. I love the fact that it's being set in the eighties and Mm -hmm. it's, it's very, very much of that time period. Mm -hmm. Um, also, once again, I think she's fantastic. Every every time she's shown up as Wonder Woman, she's been she's been great in that role. Mm-hmm. Um, they really couldn't have picked anyone wow. better for that role. Uh, yeah, and she's the, just gorgeous. Like yeah, uh, a little bit. She, she she emanates that character so well too, and it's yeah. Yeah, um, nice. I'm interested. My only concern, and I don't want to say concern. That's that's too strong a word. My only thing is just like you know, I I want this to build to something else, but it's like. Is it going to build anything else at this point with the the DC stuff? Mm-hmm. But I mean, even if yeah. it doesn't, it's just like, all right, well, fine. If we just keep getting Wonder Woman movies, all right, cool. I'm I'm cool with that. So <laughs> TV show. <laughs> maybe they'll figure out some of the other characters and we can actually start rebuilding that again. But who knows? We'll see how that happens. So yeah. Um, actually, both of those were on my list. Um, like I said, we're not ranking these, but if we were going to rank these, obviously my number one is uh, Ghostbusters. Yep. Uh, the fact that it is confirmed that we have almost the mm-hmm. entire original cast back. Um, did it, did everyone see the Bill Murray uh, commercial, the Super Bowl commercial for Jeep? No, I did. Yeah, the Groundhog Day. The Groundhog Day. That's like the only one I watched because I didn't watch Super Bowl, but I. Yeah, saw I that one on Facebook. 
that one That's i just funny. it's like okay bill you you can definitely slip back into these characters man mm-hmm. you can you can do this man so uh but yeah it's it's extremely exciting i love the new cast that they have for it they've got some really good people mm-hmm. in it the fact that it's being written by jason reitman who said he would never do a ghostbusters movie but then woke up and was just like no i have an idea for this and it's gonna be about me <laughs> so it's like cool yeah uh, yeah I, i'm extremely excited about when it when does I'm, that come out um, in the oh, summer. It's yeah, it's it's early summer. So, oh, yeah. um, I'm hoping they're going to do a uh premiere event for it, uh, whenever they do, and it, like they did uh the 2016 movie, Answer the Call. And if they do, money permitting, I really <laughs> hope to get to go out to California because I'd love to be at the premiere for that. That would be That'd that be would cool. be a once in a lifetime thing. So, that would be cool. are you guys gonna dress up for the any of the shows here locally? Uh, we're the, our group is actually looking, we're, uh, we'd like to do something with the Alamo draft house, draft house first, uh, and then going from there, just kind of, just kind of see. So, cool. but, uh, yeah, we're looking into that. Cause that was one of the other concerns was like, well, we don't want to, we don't want to schedule something if, if we're going to be in California, but it, yeah. it looks like the premieres usually happen about a week beforehand. So, you know, that would be, that would be fine. So, It'd but yes, cool we're definitely to see, like. To one of the older, you know, like the Beltonian or something, do the f- original, so, and then, you know, before that, and then you guys go for that and kind of pump it up. Yeah, well, actually, the Beltonian reached out to me la- uh, earlier this week, actually, and was oh, wanting nice. to know if we wanted to do something again in October, but then he double-checked, and apparently Sony has pulled the rights for oh. this year. They're not showing it anywhere, mm. I guess, to help pump That's up crappy. for the new movie or something, but yeah, so because we were hoping to do another event with them. That would have been fun. Yeah. So, all right, uh, Chris, what's your next one? So, yeah, Ghostbusters was on mine as well. Uh, I'm going to pick a TV show. Uh, High Fidelity is coming out on Hulu, and I really liked the movie, uh, which is based on a book. I haven't read the book, but the movie uh, was uh, John Cusack and Jack Black's one of his earlier mm-hmm. uh, roles, and I really liked it. Uh, so this time it's Zoe Kravitz is playing John Cusack's character. Um, which is funny because her mom was actually in the original High Fidelity. Hmm. Um, yeah, I just I think it's a neat, quirky, musically filled show. So I don't have Hulu, but you know Ray's got his ways, so I'm sure I'll <laughs> find it and watch it. Understandable. Uh, Jen, what's something else on your list? Um, another movie. Actually, this wasn't planned, but it's another. Strong female character, Mulan. Oh, Super yeah. Super excited that, to see that. Yeah. <sighs> Even I'm, though they're not going to have music. and I'm up for that. I prefer that. Really? See, oh. I don't know how I'm going to do with the make a man out of you scene without the, the oh. song. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's like... Johnny Dodson singing it. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just such an iconic part of the movie. But, you know, also I heard that character's not even going to be in it. And I don't know. So, But the previews look great in Disney. Yeah can't seem to do anything wrong so i'm in, you know positive Excited. it's interesting how they're taking some of these quote-unquote remakes of their animated movies like you know the lion king was basically it's just it's an animated movie again it's just you know done yeah. in a different style um it's not live action they're not yeah, real but yeah not re- yeah exactly uh <laughs> but then when they're going they're doing this route it's like ooh, is there anything else that they've done that they could take a, a more mm-hmm. realistic you know approach with so I, I it's interesting that they're they're going with that approach so yeah and they they tweak the story slightly too in these new versions like in um aladdin you, you know they Kind of gave Jasmine a little more uh, personality yeah. and, and more of a role. She was a little stronger. I kind of like that. So we'll mm-hmm. see what they do here. Because, you know, there's already characters we didn't see in the last one in the previews. Um, so watching the Oscars pre-show, um, Lynn, uh, Lynn Manuel Miranda is doing the music for Little Mermaid, the Little Mermaid reboot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I thought was pretty cool. Okay. Yeah. So that'll be interesting. For Moana. Yeah, he did. And Mary Poppins. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Mulan didn't didn't make mine, but another Disney esque, well, sub Disney, uh, 
Pixar's Onward. When I first saw the trailer for this, I wasn't sure where it was going. And now that the story's come out, uh, you know, it's these two. I love this. I love this. I don't want to say post-apocalyptic um, uh, uh, fantasy world, you know, for for uh, uh, you know, fancy characters or fancy creatures or whatever. But it's definitely kind of a, you know, everything's everything's settled down. Like everyone has a day job and everything else. <laughs> uh, and the fact that these two brothers and of course they pick fantastic voice actors <laughs> for pretty much everyone. Uh, Is it seeing, uh, Chris Pratt and? Uh, it's Chris Pratt and. Tom uh, the, Yes. Uh, yeah. So, which almost it almost makes me wonder. Well, apparently, he's got something to say. Uh, go on, Wicket. He likes Chris. <laughs> Did you hear me? <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh. Yeah. When I saw the trailer for it, the the trailer, and you actually get the idea of okay, this is what that's happening. They're going to go try to save their father and yeah. all this other stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm down for this. This might be something I want to take the boys to go see. So that's why it kind of yeah. got me. So. It's a cute concept, and um, the idea of, like, you know, these magical, quote-unquote magical creatures living boring, mundane suburban lives <laughs> and, like, unicorns or scavenge, like, stray dogs in their I, universe. Yes, <laughs> I love the fact that that's the way they took it. It was that, you know, you take the most, you know, ideally magical creature out there and you make it essentially like, you know, a possum or a raccoon, something that you yeah. don't want getting in the trash. The <laughs> exactly. So, uh, Chris had to step out. So, what's another one on your list, uh, Jen? Um, well, since she brought up Lin Manuel Miranda, um, In the Heights is is one of the movies I'm in, I'm excited to see. Mm-hmm. Um, ever since I saw they were coming out with that movie, I was uh, looking forward to it, and I think it's slated to come out in June. So. We're talking about In the Heights, Chris. Oh, yes. Sorry, I just put the kids to bed. Yeah, it's all good. So, uh, and I brought, the movie I brought up was um, Pixar's Onward. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we were saying that, you know, I was I was saying that, you know, they've got a great voice cast. And, you know, mm-hmm. when it first came out, it was like, okay, well, I wonder what they're going to do with this. And then you get the idea, okay, well, it's them traveling together to go save their father i was like this might be something that might be fun to go see with the boys so that's uh with chris pratt and tom holland right yes it is oh, okay uh, logan's well, gonna want to see that just for tom holland alone logan's gonna <laughs> <know>. yeah <laughs> um all right so uh, uh what's another one on your list chris um another one legally blonde three and mostly for really? nostalgia purposes. I saw that. Uh, just because it's it's fun. It's like one of those movies where you can just go and sort of shut your brain off and be happy for two hours. So I want to see where they've gone. Like it's hard? Yeah, exactly. It's hard. Um, <laughs> see where they've taken Elle Woods and yeah. see if Bruiser's still around or if it's like Bruiser 2 and um, where her career has gone and stuff like that, where they've decided to do with her and yeah. I'm sure Christy will be going to the theater yeah. for that one because she enjoys. I know so she cute. enjoys the first one. I'm not sure sure about the second one, but I know she enjoyed the first one. So mm-hmm. I thought they were they were funny. They were fun. You're not you're not looking for the meaning of life in those movies. They're just for fun. <laughs> yep. Bend and snap. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> I love nice. Jennifer Coolidge. I love her. So I hope oh, she's yeah. this one. <laughs> um. Another one that I had uh, on my list was um, Godzilla vs. King Kong. This is really? something that I've wanted as a kid. These movies are not – these are not cinema. These are, like you said, you go and you turn your brain off. Like <laughs> in the last movie, in the, God, the last Godzilla movie, The King of the Monsters, it's – the science they're throwing out that I'm just like, I don't know how you're saying this with a straight face because this is totally <laughs> made up. But you know what? I don't care. I'm having fun watching giant – you know, now, you know, CG monsters instead of guys in rubber suits destroy cities and stuff. That's yeah. what I that's what I paid to show, you know, to get. And that's that's what I got. So I'm happy. I, so I have never seen any Godzilla movies I, and I don't plan to start anytime soon. They're fun. <laughs> they have no interest. I'm not sure I have either. If I have, I haven't watched a full one. Yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm just like, eh, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I'll save so. my. Well, I don't want to. I don't want to be. I don't want to be sexist here and say it's kind of a guy thing, but it's it's kind of a guy thing. <laughs> yeah, because like my brother and much. friends are all about it. Yeah. Yeah. Ray would probably want to go see that too. That might be on his list as well. Yeah. Uh, what's another one you got for us, Chris? 
Um, I ha- uh, uh, so another TV show that I'm looking forward to, um, Lock and Key. It's on Netflix. Yes. Actually, it just started, I think, Friday. Okay. Because we were looking for a show that sort of all four of us could watch together. And mm-hmm. the stuff that Ray and I want to watch, it's not for children. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> It always winds up being an R rating. You're like, oh, if the kids were a little older, mm-hmm. they would uh, they would like it. Uh, so, yeah, Lock and Key. I keep seeing previews for it on Netflix. So it looks interesting. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Maybe, like, if you like Harry Potter, you'll like Lock and Key, maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. But yeah. Yeah, they've been trying. I know it's based off a, a, a very highly acclaimed comic book series. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Graphic novel yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I've never read it, and I know they've been trying to make this this show, this movie, for mm-hmm. a long time, and they finally got it. So, yeah, I'm interested to see what you know what it, what it's about. So, but, yeah. All right, uh, uh, Jen, what's another one on your list? Um, another movie, surprise, surprise, um, <laughs> The Eternals. Oh yeah, that was on my list too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I you know I'm not. I don't follow the comic books very well, so I don't know the full story, but I'm always, I'm a sucker for the MCU and seeing that story continue. So I'm interested in seeing kind of where they take that. Yeah. The, uh, the Eternals is one of those that, you know, they're kind of getting further and further into the, the, the more hardcore to like, you really have to know your stuff to get. Yeah. So I have, I know nothing about it, but I'm like you, it's like, it's an MCU movie. All right. I'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Plus I want to <laughs> know why uh, Kamalni and Johnny, I said his name wrong, but you know who I'm talking about? God yes. so buff. Like, why? Why did he mm-hmm. have to get shredded like that? Yeah. yeah. Not yes. going to complain about it, but... I don't know. It was, it was very nice. <laughs> and then he w- he went on Kimmel, and Kimmel, uh, like, plied him with, with all these carbs and refined sugars, and he cried eating pizza because he hadn't eaten it in a year. He actually got really <laughs> emotional about it. Yeah. And the rest of the time, he's just hoveling, like, cheesecake into his it. face because nice. he hadn't eaten it in a year and a half. Yeah. 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 Marvel makes something, and it's pretty much just shut up and take my money at this point. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And I, I kind of hate myself for it, and I'm also like, well, I don't, you know, splurge on a alone. lot of media, so I know. Yeah. Alone. <laughs> well, and see, there's a lot of people. I've heard a lot of people talk about. They're like, you know, I feel like they're like, they're like, if they don't make any more Marvel movies at this point, I would be okay. And I'm like, I could, I can see that. Like, we had a great wrap up in Endgame. Well, technically, it was Spider Man was the actual last movie in that phase but i'm like no i want to see where it it, it, it goes from here because it's obviously they have a yeah. plan that's one nice thing is you know they've got a plan mm-hmm. so yeah yeah um, or 11 percent of a plan or <laughs> yes uh who was that that just went uh, me okay uh next one on my list is a movie that what just like ghostbusters uh it's been a long time People have been saying that there was going to be a part three. There just never has been. And it's finally getting made. I cannot wait for Bill and Ted to the music. <laughs> okay, <laughs> another commercial. Have oh y'all seen God. the the Walmart commercial? The newest Walmart commercial? Yes. yes. No. Oh, my God. That the one just you shared out- on the... Yes. Yeah, and I didn't watch yet. There is a yeah because they end up taking all these different spaceships, more sci-fi vehicles or whatever, and there's a part where the telephone booth shows up, mm-hmm. and modern day Ted walks out with a. It's gotta be it's gotta be de-aged version of him as like original, and I'm mm-hmm. just like, oh my god, that looks fantastic! I can't wait to actually see this movie. Oh yeah, I'm very excited. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. So yeah, Bill and I, I, you know, it's been it, it's been a a pet, you know, it's been something they've wanted to do, and I think it's yeah. one of those things they finally was like, no, we finally got the we got the script down we want. So, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm I'm extremely excited to see what they end up doing with this. So, and especially because they got what's his name to come back as death. That's <gasps> did they really? Yes, they Whoa. did. So it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. So, so that's sad. gonna be a fun movie. Uh, <laughs> all right, Chris, what's another thing on your list? 12 year old me is freaking out about Bill and Ted <laughs> just so you know like I love Keanu Reeves <laughs> too much and like Logan makes fun of me and uh yeah I'm very excited that they finally I, it had to be the right story or else yeah. it just would have been awful and uh the fact that both of them are on board and <laughs> Keanu's got long hair for it uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do so you're 
You're going to watch the SpongeBob movie just for the scene with him, huh? <laughs> Was There's he in a, that movie? The new one that's oh, coming no. out this year. There's no, like I'll... a stupid scene in the previews. Yeah. I it will. looks really I, bad, but oh, I, will. I watched the first SpongeBob and I regret it. Um, so I'll <laughs> the next one, Miles. I'll do another show. Penny Dreadful, City of Angels. So Penny Dreadful was on Showtime, and it was I didn't like finish it. Like I, think I didn't got... either, but I got really close. I think we were only like a few episodes off of finishing it, and for whatever reason we didn't. But they're doing it now. Um, in the 1930s really? and they're doing more of a Mexican folklore from what I read. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see where they take that because the first penny, the first set of Penny Dreadfuls, his first three seasons were from up into the third season that I watched were really, really good. And yes. I was a bit bummed that they canceled it, but yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. I didn't, I haven't heard anything about that. I didn't know they were bringing that back. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I don't know when it's coming out, though. They didn't give a date, but just that they had the, uh, like, a screenshot of an actress and then the little blurb of where they're going to go with it. Good deal. Yeah. Yeah, I may have to check that out. I, I keep meaning to go back and finish the first the first one. I just it's it's still in my queue on Netflix. It just mm-hmm. I haven't I haven't done it yet. So, uh, Jen, what's another one on your list? Okay, I'm going to switch to some music for a bit. Um, the Dixie Chicks have a new album coming out this year. Really? And cool. I was all about the Dixie Chicks when I was younger, and now I'm even more about them because they're, you know, badass and mm-hmm. active activists. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't see a month for that, but um, I'm and also they've been touring, and I've, I have gotten to see them a couple times um, in concert, but not recently. So be excited to see them again. Very cool. Uh, switching over to television, um, Big Mouth season four is supposed to hit this year sometime. <gasps> oh, I wow. adore this series. It is absolutely <laughs> horrible, but oh my yeah. God, it's so <laughs> funny. I have to watch um, season three. Season two was definitely kind of a departure. It went in some kind of weird. It was okay, mm-hmm. but it definitely was not like part one, the first season. And then season three definitely kind of went back to its roots. Yeah? Okay. So I'm I'm excited <laughs> to see where season four goes. Um, yeah, just these, some of the stuff they come up with is just so over the top ridiculous. And I honestly I don't know why Christy hasn't watched it with me because it's so her humor. She I'm would sure love she it. Hasn't watched it. I think she's tried to watch a little bit of it, but she just really has a hard time doing animation for whatever reason. Oh, so. okay. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, it's God, it's inappropriate. Man, it's mm-hmm. funny. Super inappropriate. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, obviously the kids aren't watching that one with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, all right, Chris, what's another one on your list? Uh, so if I read this right, the Mandalorian's coming back at the end of this year. Yes. It's season. on my list as well. So, more of Baby Yoda, so mm-hmm. more of the cuteness aggression could come cuteness out. Cuteness overload. I can't. I seriously, <laughs> it's too much. I, but it's a really, I, what I liked about The Mandalorian is how fast-paced it was. Like, you weren't, mm-hmm. that's my bit of beef with um, the Star Wars movies. And I understand they're space operas, so I understand it's it's the drama of it all and just sort of how epic it all is. But sometimes Draw I, it get, out. Yeah. I get bored. Did you watch Did you watch The Rise of Skywalker? No, I haven't seen it yet. Um, really? It is not that way. It is actually, okay. like, some people have even complained oh. it's too fast-paced, but I, I actually liked it. It's like, once it hits, it goes, okay. and it doesn't stop. Because so. that was my big complaint <laughs> with the last one, was that it was like, oh my gosh, literally, the picture of the two spaceships chasing each other, that's what this is like. I'm just waiting to <laughs> phone up. I can't. It's just too slow. Uh, I'm going to later- ask... Ray, to record you having cuteness overload with Baby Yoda the next oh, time you guys watch okay. it. I want to see this. <laughs> Send us a video. Stupid. Um, stupid. I'm a meme, essentially, when I see him. Gotcha. Yeah, but I'm looking at the Mandalorian super fast paced. We've been bugging Logan to watch it because she's obsessed with Baby Yoda but hasn't seen it yet. So it's super mm. fast paced. The episodes are really. They're like less than 40 minutes, I think. 40-ish yeah, minutes. Yeah, 40-ish minutes, yeah. Yeah, but again, like as soon as it starts, it's off and running and really, really, really well done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So I'm excited to see where they where they go. Yes, I am too. So, um, all right, Jen, what's another one on your list? Um, another album, The Killers, are coming oh. out with a new one in the spring. So excited for that because, um, yeah, they're like I've liked them since the beginning, and Brandon Flowers is great to look at as well. Yes, Christy is 100% <laughs> on board with that. So uh, she'll she'll be all about that when that comes out. So. She, she and I can go see them in concert next time they're close. She might do it. Like if if you find t- you know if you find out early enough and tickets aren't stupid stupid yeah. ridiculous, uh, she would probably be down for that. So I, I saw them in Austin a few years ago and they were just great. Like mm-hmm. one of the best concerts I've been to. But I'm also partial. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, next one on my list uh, is uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. The series coming out on uh, mm-hmm. Disney Plus. Like. I love their dynamic. I mm-hmm. love that um, Falcon is basically taking over, you know, stepping into the Captain America role. I I want to see what they do with the series. Like, mm-hmm. I I think it could be, a, if as long as it's, you know, well done, which everything else that they've, you know, done Marvel Universe-wise. And the other thing is, is the other reason I'm interested in seeing it is now that they've basically said, yes, all the other Marvel series that we were doing are shut down. And if it is not part of the, the movie canon, it's not going to get made. So I know any time and energy I invest in it will actually pay off somewhere else. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that was one of the things, like, when when uh, Agents of Fiel- uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. first started, uh, I liked it, uh, but then it became very apparent that it wasn't going to tie into the movies anymore, and it was just mm-hmm. like, well, it's not, it's okay, but it's, I, I want that, I want that to, to tie in somewhere or another, so... Uh, so yeah, I'm ex- I'm excited to see what what they do with that. So, all right, uh, what's another one you got for us, uh, Chris? If we haven't already finished your list, because I know, <laughs> considering the things that y'all brought up, my list is almost done. I know mine's <laughs> almost done too. I only have two more things. I just thought of something while Jen was mentioning music. Um, Green Day has a new album coming out with my favorite swear word in it. So it's called Father <laughs> uh, Father of All Motherfuckers. And father I, is your favorite swear word? Motherfucker. No, right? <laughs> uh, so really, yeah, they're great. We saw them in concert a few years ago, and it was one of the best concerts we'd ever been to for three hours straight. Those guys uh-huh. were nonstop, and it was the mo- one of the most energetic concerts I've ever been to. And these guys are in their like mid hardcore mid forties, pushing fifty, and mm-hmm. they're still bouncing around. Like I got tired. I'm like. <laughs> Like 15 years younger than me, older than me, and I'm <laughs> for shame. I need to go to the gym. Um, but yeah, Green Day's one of those. Ray and I have been listening to them since we were like kids, so super happy. <laughs> Nostalgia. They're cool. Nostalgia, and that they keep mm-hmm. going, and they're awesome. There's some bands that are just like that. They're just oh, classic. Yeah. Like, yeah. Can't are you anymore. are you falling into that meme of? Uh... Uh, what is it? Shakira in her forties and yeah. Zero in her fifties, and me in my thirties, and it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> like on the ground. Yeah, on the ground, dying, you yeah. know, completely out of shape yeah. or whatever, and it's just yeah. like, look at these bitches. <laughs> uh, so uh, they've got one of the like, I've fallen and I can't get up, lady. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <Life alert. laughs> yeah, that's uh, how I feel some days. Thirties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Oh, pardon me. As Eugene yawns. Yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Jen, what's another one you have on your list? Um. Okay, so this is another movie, Free Guy. Have you all seen the previews for yes, this? Yes, it almost made my it almost made my list. Is that the one with Ryan, Ryan Reynolds? Reynolds? Yes. Yeah, it looks pretty funny. Where he's in a simulation, a game, and mm-hmm. he doesn't know it, and he plays like one of the you know background characters and then one day he just decides to like go off script and he picks up a pair of gla- goggles and realizes he's in a video game and that all this violence everywhere is actually like you know kind of dangerous <laughs> he starts to like play the game so it, it just looks good and, and he's great for the role like he's the mm-hmm. perfect person oh yeah it's a disney movie of course yeah i'm pretty sure right yeah disney i think so uh, yeah, the tra- this trailer came on before my boys and I went and watched um, uh, Rise of Skywalker, and this was a trailer that was on before, and like Nick's mind was blown. He's like, <laughs> Dad, can we go watch that? And I'm like, ah, 
we'll see. I, maybe one of those I need to go watch first and yeah. just kind of critique and then mm-hmm. be like, well, okay, maybe so. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what it's rated. I mean, I would assume PG, but still, that can be iffy for younger kids. Yeah. So. Yeah. But yeah, that almost made my list. When I saw that, I was like, okay, this looks like it's going to be a fun movie. So, um, <laughs> The last thing that's actually on my official list of 10, I've actually got two other honorable mentions I threw on there, but um, is, and this is nothing set, uh, but both authors we've talked about have said they're probably going to have a book coming out this year. So if we get anything from Dency Taylor or Scott mm-hmm. Meyer, I mm-hmm. would be just on cloud nine. Yeah, um, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I we should be getting that new Bender book this year uh, because he just finished wrapping that up from Dennis e. Taylor. And I think Scott Meyer said uh, we were going to be getting uh, possibly the second Authorities book, which I'd be oh, cool. extremely happy yes. with as well. So, yep. uh, yeah, I'm hoping he, anything we get from those gentlemen, I'll I'll be set. I'll be good. So, mm-hmm. all right, uh, Chris, you got anything else on your, on your list? One more thing. Um, so my favorite author of my chosen form of mom porn, uh, Sherry Lynn Kenyon, she had a bunch of stuff come out in 2019 that I've missed. So this year I'm looking forward to reading it. There's three series that she has <laughs> that I've managed to miss at least one book from. Um, so the Dead Man's Cross series, the Dark Country series, and the League series are all they. She's I've missed at least one. I don't know how this woman pumps out all these books, but she does, and they're really good guilty pleasures. Nice. And I need to read more of them. <laughs> I'm catching up to do. <laughs> gotcha. Suggest them for book club. <laughs> I did. I said su- no. That wasn't one. No, it wasn't one that I suggested. That that was a different author, but yeah. That was a different author, but <laughs> I told you if I, I have no problem reading oh, these for the book club, so. I just can't believe you listen to them on audio. Like, it's, I don't know how I would <laughs> do Are these your that. smut books? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah we'll have to have a discussion sometime. Anyway, oh, uh, <laughs> about some of the stuff that I've listened to. Anyway, Jennifer, yeah. uh, what do you have anything else on your list? Well, yeah, I had a couple honorable mentions. Uh, the Kingsman, I'm interested in seeing that. That's kind of the prequel to the Kingsman series. Mm-hmm. Um, to see I how still that all got seen started. Those. Really? Yes, I've heard they're fun. They're really I've good. Yeah, one. Taron Egerton and Colin Firth. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't even get me started. <laughs> yeah, but the story's also compelling. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good acting. You know, it's and then there's just like a fun, you know, kind of goofy element to it. Mm-hmm. Um and then The Quiet Place 2 actually looked pretty good. I saw the preview for that and I was I like, do I haven't seen one? the first one and I'm cuz it's I like can't. It's Mine's yeah, at, at night I'm like, no, I don't need to watch this at nighttime. I think I watched that at home alone one night and oh I was like, what God. the fuck is wrong with me? Yeah, what were you <laughs> I don't know. It was a red box, and I was like, this is not smart. No. Um, but, yeah, that looks – I mean, watch the first one and, you know, rate it, but um, interested in seeing that. And um, can I go a little rogue and say something that's not really pop culture, but I'm really, really looking forward to <laughs> Government in our November elections. Please, everybody in America. Oh. <laughs> you, were you were breaking yeah. up. You were breaking up. It was hard to hear you. Uh-huh. So you were saying the, the upcoming course. elections. Mm-hmm. So. Yes, I'm looking very forward to the November elections. Please don't let me down, America. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel the exact same. Stop. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, you guys are yeah, like, like someone, I, I remember someone writing on Facebook a couple of years ago said something that's like, you know, this last season of America, the reality show sucked. Like, it's gone way off the rails. <laughs> so hopefully we'll correct that in this next season. Mm-hmm. Um, I had two other things that I had as honorable mentions. Um, the one is, okay, so uh, just a couple of weeks ago, just kind of on a lark, I've been told to watch these, at least watch this one movie, and I finally got around to it and ended up showing my boys, and they loved it. Uh, the Jungle Book. I mean, mm-hmm. not The Jungle Book. Um, uh, Jumanji. Oh, yeah. It was a fantastic oh. movie. I still haven't seen the second one. And the reason why I bring that one up is um, the trailer for Jungle Cruise. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this looks fun. When I first watched that trailer, I got um, I got that feeling I got when I watched the first trailer for uh, Parts of the Caribbean. And because that that first movie is is just fun. That is just a fun, awesome movie. So I'm hoping I'm hoping this is gonna be a fun movie too. Uh, that was on my list. And then the other one, I'm a dude, freaking Top Gun Maverick. It, come on, it's yeah. It, I'm interested. I, of course, I think he's a decent actor, but um, this is a role that th- this is a role that made him. And I want to I want to see him, you know, reprise that role and see what they do with it. So yes, yeah, I. I that was one I was looking at too. And I really like the original one and see, and, and um, Val Kilmer's going to be in it. I'm not sure how they're going to do that because I, he's looks so different. He sounds so different. Yes. He can barely talk. Yeah. Um, but I do like the fact that uh, miles. Um, nope. Going to forget. His, it's not miles teller. Is it miles teller who plays goose's son in the movie? The actor. I think so yeah. Um, so he plays Goose's son, which I'm glad that there's that little yeah a tie in. So, yeah. but yeah, when I saw the trailer for this, I was like, okay, this is this is gonna be interesting. You know, we've got an interesting coming year coming up. We've got Wonder Woman, which is actually set in the '80s, and we've got three huge '80s movies getting sequels mm-hmm. after a long period of time being Ghostbusters, Bill and Ted, and, and then Top Gun. So. Yeah, it's it's gonna be very heavily '80s themed this summer, so that which <laughs> I'm all for. So that's very cool. Uh, Chris, did you have any more honorable mentions you wanted to throw out there? Or no, I'm good. Very cool. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to our picks and pans for the week. Would anyone like to go first? All right, I'll, I'll, mm. I've got it. I've got two picks. The first one is the boys got Luigi's Mansion Three on the Switch for Christmas. Um, it's it's Mario and Luigi. Well, it's, it's Luigi, but it's Luigi running around with a vacuum cleaner on his back, basically busting <laughs> ghosts. It's it's a fun game, and they do have a mechanic in it where you can play two players. So I've been playing it by myself, but then the boys have been playing their own, and then I've been helping them out or whatever. And it's just it's been fun. It's not um it's not really hard. Some of the some of the puzzles are a little like I don't really. Okay, that's fine. If it didn't really make sense, you should have had a little bit more information on how to do this, but whatever. Uh, but otherwise, I'm having fun. It's just go home and turn our brain off for an hour and maybe play a little bit, and you know, it's 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 really fun. So, uh, and then if I need something to put on in the background that I don't have to think about at all, and I don't have to worry about you know missing anything, I found this series on Netflix. It's a British show. It's called The Repair Shop. It's not like it's not like a reality television show where like either there's it's a competition like you know they're you know who can repair this or whatever and it's not like um you know a lot of other I say BS reality shows where they have to inject a bunch of you know made up drama or whatever so it's not like you know these people are bringing stuff in and they're like you know will he be able to finish the repair in time or will he be able mm-hmm. to do there's none of that it's literally just these very quaint British people coming in and they're like, I have this clock that my grandfather gave me and it stopped working a year or so ago. And I would really like to see if you could fix it. And it's, you know, there's a, there's this, this guy, he's an excellent woodworker. There's a guy who's really good with, you know, mechanical things. There's a woman who's really good with like painting and porcelain and stuff. And so whatever it is that comes in, they, you know, help each other out or whatever. And they end up fixing these things. And it's just, it's, it's almost, it's not quite, um, it's not quite Bob Ross level of just <laughs> relaxing. But it's, just, it's just nice to see these these nice British people fixing stuff <laughs> and seeing this artisan work. And this, I mean, it is it is craftsmen. These people are craftsmen, and they are very good at what they do. And, and they're tricking kind of you into learning at the same time, huh? Yeah, a little bit of that too. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah, it's just it's fun to watch. And like I said, I can put it on the background. I can be working on something on my laptop, and I can sit down and watch for a few minutes and go back. And like I said, if I miss something, it's not that big a deal. And it's it's very relaxing. I, when I posted about it on Facebook, I had several people comment. They're like. <laughs> I'm gonna have to watch this. This look, that sounds that sounds nice. <laughs> so I'm gonna send you these events that I keep seeing pop up on Facebook. Austin, uh, I think it's the Austin Public Library does fix it clinics every month, mm-hmm. and it's basically where you bring in something that you need help fixed, and they have people there to help you figure it out. You can't leave it. You can't just like 
you know, say, hey, fix this and leave. But like, they just, you know, it's all in like the spirit of prolonging the life of things, keeping it at the landfill and also teaching, you know, you, the community how to kind of take care of stuff. It looks pretty cool. I've never been to one. That, that does sound very cool. Since you like fixing things and tinkering, I think. Well, really I don't like know if I like <laughs> fixing stuff. I just, I just do it because I feel like I need to. But no, that would, that would sound, that sounds interesting. That sounds like a something, mm-hmm. something to do so very cool yeah do send me one of those uh chris what's your pick or pan for the week or month i I should say uh kind of one of each uh so my pan is the teachers are on strike and they've been on what's called a work to rule strike for a while meaning they don't do any extracurricular activities which means they also don't do report cards so the kids aren't getting a report card uh Hmm. So far, they were supposed to get one um, like a week or two ago and aren't getting it because that's when the teachers do it is usually on the weekends. And because they're uh, without a contract right now, they're saying, nope, not doing any of this. Um, So that sucks. And Hmm. so last week, the kids were off and then they were doing rotating strikes. So each school board would take a day to strike. So it was just like once a month. And then now uh, last week, they were off two days. This week, they're off two days, so they're off. Last week, it was Monday and and Thursday. This week, it's Tuesday and Thursday. Um, And unfortunately, if this continues up until mid-April, it means that Logan's grade 8 grad trip will be canceled. Um, So she's really crossing her fingers on that. Unfortunately, the government's dealing with four different teachers' unions right now for this, so hopefully, fingers crossed, they Mm -hmm. get collectively their shit Mm -hmm. together. Uh, So that's kind of sucky um because quinn was also supposed to go on a ski trip this friday and it's been canceled because of the work to rule because they have to be there so mm-hmm. early in the morning and they're not getting back till late and so um but my picks are ray's been shift changed again but it means he's not working nights anymore so that's good so he's on okay. four tens monday to thursday so that's nice um because when he comes off nights he's just a zombie i mean anybody who works nights like that knows when you try to sleep and stuff, it's, you're all discombobulated. Um, I finished reading the cursed child. (laughs) It was amazing. Holy crap. (laughs) Okay. So I'm looking to throw something else. Like I've got a credit on audible. Yeah. Okay. It's great. It's okay. So I'm going to do that then. (laughs) Because it takes place. It starts 19 years after the battle of Hogwarts. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's the main characters are uh, Albus Potter and Scorpius Malfoy. So it's really, really good. Um, Logan's reading it right now for a book report that she's got to do. And she's really liking it. So that's very good if you want a little extra Harry Potter world. Um, and then we started, I started watching this. Ray hasn't watched yet. Good Omens on Amazon with David Tennant and Michael Sheen. So good. I've watched a couple of episodes and kind of felt, but yeah, it was, it was, um, it's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> the two it, of them together. <laughs> Eugene, were you the one telling me about that one? I, I, I may have mentioned it to you. Uh, but yeah, yeah it's I, like I said, I've watched at least a couple of episodes things. and, hmm. uh, yeah, I've heard nothing but good stuff too, as well. And it's, so good. yeah, just seeing that how their, your, how their personalities are and how they, how they work together is, is mm-hmm. awesome. <laughs> yeah, my one of my favorite things so far that happens is um, so Michael Sheen plays an angel. I can't remember his name right now, but David Tennant plays a demon named Crawley, and they're trying to work together to to, to prevent apocalypse from happening. So Michael <laughs> Sheen owns this vintage bookstore with vintage wine, and they both get drunk, and then they realize that they have to actually think about this and and talk about it rationally so they're like okay we got to sober up so they just scrunch their faces up like this and like literally squeeze all the alcohol out of themselves and in back (laughs) to the bottles and then they're not drunk anymore but then they got this like bad aftertaste in their mouth so it's just kind of that scene was really funny to watch and then the the satanic nuns that whole scene was really neat too (laughs) yes but it's it's a fun (laughs) show and and neil gaiman is just that man's a genius the amount of work he has put out and the, mm-hmm. it's so good. Oh, <laughs> it's not fair. That's it. It's not fair. It's not, <laughs> Some people should be, get all the good stories. Oh, he does. He is all of them. Stardust is one of my favorite stories and he wrote it. Nice. Uh, yeah, that's another show that I need to get back to, yeah. to get back on. So, uh, Jen, you have a pick or pan for the month? 
Um, yeah, I, I guess mine is just that I have been able to hike and get outdoors pretty regularly, which was kind of one of my goals going into the new year because I kind of um, slacked on that some last year. And it really makes a difference in my mental and emotional well-being when I can do that. It's kind of therapy for me. So being outside, hiking, getting some stuff done in the yard, you know, my garden, and um, even like busted the bike out a few weeks ago, which was interesting because I haven't done that in a while. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm just, you know, trying to keep up with that because that makes me feel good. Good deal. Very good. Uh, well, that is our show for the month. It's weird saying that in so week, but uh, that is our show for the month, ladies and gentlemen. If you would, please give us a five-star rating on iTunes, uh, Stitcher, Google Music, and anywhere else that you can find the show. Um, also, do check out uh, our other shows, The Marginally Geeky Show. The last episode we had out was our interview with uh, Dennis E. Taylor. Um, we've got a new episode of Sustainably Geeky coming out here probably in the next week or so. Um, then we have... We were trying to do another episode of Procrastinators. That fell through. Probably won't get done till the end of the month now. Just we're, put it off again. You we're know, living up to that name, let me tell you. <laughs> um, and then our new show, which we're going to record episode one coming up th- uh, later on this week, Creatively Geeky, uh, will be out here uh, probably in the following week. So, um, And then, as always, you can find us at Epically Geeky on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and then at the actual website, epicallygeeky.com. Where can we find you online, Chris? You can find me here at Epically Geeky and Marginally Geeky, which I finished the book the other day, and Sustainably Geeky, which was a very fun, informative episode. My daughter (laughs) is on it. Um, And then Creatively Geeky. That's the new one coming out. So we'll be on that one as well. And I'm I'm looking forward to that very much so. And on Instagram at The Burrow Life. And yeah. Good deal. Uh, Jen, where can we find you online? Uh, you can find me here on Epically Geeky and, as you both said, Marginally Geeky and Sustainably Geeky. And our next episode will be about fast fashion. So if you're interested in learning about that, um, that's what we're talking about, and that'll be posted soon. And then on the new Creatively Geeky show as well. Um, and then on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Het's Gonna Be Me. I still love it. <laughs> And as always, you can find my individual individual wacky adventure online at Optimus Gene on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. For everyone on the site, have a good night. Mm-hmm.